Welcome. This video is for you as a product manager on how to create a new product. Actually, it's one of the first steps that you want, that you want to go um, or take if you are new to Jira and you're a project manager. You want to get to this page, not actually uh, the page in our CBIT Media account, but in your domain. So a technical um, point would be just go to this URL part um, in your instance Easier it will be is if you click on this button, this administration button here, and then you click on projects. And then you get to this page, and you may see a project list already. And I hope that you'll see uh, this add project button. If you don't see that, you may not have the right to create a project yourself. You have to uh, then speak to your administrator of your Jira instance to either grant you the right so that you can do that yourself, or sit in with him or someone else who has the right and do that with him. Actually, the procedure stays the same. Um, so you go to this page, you click on Add Project, and then what I already did is I had to put in my password again because there's an, another security layer that asks you to provide your password again. And then you go to this um, page here where you can choose certain templates for projects. Basically, what you see here is a differentiation for transition and workflow schemes, for notification schemes, for rights, and uh, actually also some um, usage of add-ons. So if you use this service desk project, you can only do that if Jira service desk is installed. Um, and Agile Scrum or Agile Kanban will only be available if you have Jira Agile installed. So um, this list of templates may be different for your instance. Um, what I would highly recommend, if you're actually new to Jira, you want to start with the simple issue tracking. Even if you want to do a help desk, um, it could be that you uh, be useful to start there and then you still can move to a service desk or you can start over later and create a new project as a service desk, which you'll use predictively. So um, this is meant to get you started. So um, the easiest way is to you use this simple issue tracking, which will also help us to get a very easy workflow where we create issues and they get into to do. We can put them in progress, put them in done, and actually you can go from each status to the other. So um, this is very simple. Let's go to um, a software development workflow and see there. So you have um, uh, more um, issue types and more uh, workflow times. But we won't um, haggle with that. And actually, one of the biggest problems that I see with Jira adoption is that at this point you may stop going on and you may want to look at oh which workflow do I want to have, which issue types do I need and uh, how should uh, the transitions between those workflow states uh, be and what should be available and should I have some validation points so that if someone goes into in review he has to give me a link to a confluence page so that I can see the documentation for the whole thing and stop that, stop that at this point. If you're new to Jira, you just wanna try out the software and get the big chunks of value that you can get out. So you wanna have this as simple as possible at this point, and you can start over creating a new project uh, which all the bells and whistles later. You wanna click on simple issue tracking first. So that's what we do, we select that one. We actually have to provide a name, so this is my test project USA. I'm gonna uh, TUSA, test USA. I wanna be the project lead. Awesome. And then I hit submit. Actually, the key is something that you can, can change later, so it's not important for us now, but um, uh, you'll not be able to change that later. So, um, if you want to create a productive product, you want to, may want to think of what should be the issue keys. Actually, they're going to be uh, 
test USA dash one dash two dash three dash four and so on. So um, a short key is helpful. Okay, and then I hit submit and wait for Jira to create my project. And here we go. So this is uh, actually the overview. And if you are the, the lead and you have administration rights, um, there's this administration tab also. And actually what people often do now is um, they create issues for this project and then they try to share them with others and then those other people can't access them, uh, which is often a problem of roles. Um, it depends on how your, conf uh, your Jira is um, configured, but let me t show you here that there are different roles in our um, system. So there's administrators, there's outsiders, actually those are German terms, um, but uh, developers, the project team, uh, the customer, the project lead, uh, Q&A, uh, service desk, and also on, uh, so. so. And there are no users inside here. And it depends on how your Jira is configured, but in, in bigger companies, you'll run into a configuration that is very similar to ours. So if no one is in here, no one will be able to access your um, project. So you're alone in your project, which is probably not what you want. So um, what you want to do is at least in the project team area, you would want to add, let me add Christian and Matthias, and maybe Alina. I could also add a group, which could be all, uh, hold on, all, uh, employees, so everyone could be able to work in my um, team or only uh, those shareholders or whoever, but I don't do that as this is only a test here. So I'm, I'm only inviting those three and let's assume that uh, Alina should be a leader of this project also. And then I hit update. And that's something that you want to do to make sure that at least in a, in a restrictive environment, you also get everyone to access this. Basically, the first step you want to do still is you want to create a new issue, um, which is uh, already highlighted here. Get your project started, create your first issue by clicking create issue button at the top of the page, which is here. Um, it could be blue like this one. Actually, both of those will, will work but I recommend that you click on this one. So what you do is you create your first issues, uh, then you organize them and so on. I'm not gonna do that because I'm gonna shift this to other videos. Um, you may wanna subscribe to the channel or see the playlist that we'll create for this series of how to adopt Jira as a product manager. But um, let's take a further look into administration area. So we have seen those roles. Then there's this permission scheme where you can, actually we have a default permission scheme. It may be that this is very restrictive in your company. So what you can do is if you are the project administrator, you can edit this permissions or use a different scheme. And I highly recommend that you use a different scheme if this is too restricted for you. So, and actually what you can do is you can see which other um, uh, permission schemes are available, available in your instance. And um, then you can choose one and look at that later or ask someone else who already has permission uh, or a project, which scheme he uses. And so for me, internal, looks fine, and then I'm gonna associate this scheme. It's an easy way to make sure that everything is um, configured in a way someone else thought of already. So um, if you're just a project manager and someone else runs this Jira already, it's very easy to, to just hop on their kind of best practice how to do that. Um, the same goes with all the other stuff, like if you, um, want to uh, think of notifications, 
So Jira is obviously sending out emails and you want it to send out emails, but you don't want the people to be spammed or soaked by emails. So you want to use a notification scheme that someone else chose already. Actually, I don't know, I am standard looks fine for me, so I'm going to associate that. And as you saw, I didn't have a notification scheme earlier. It said none. So no emails would have been sent out, which may be what I want. Um, I can tell you. Um, and you can click through all of these things and just take what someone else has um, prepared already. And so if you're a project manager, actually it's pretty simple to start off. And it's at the same time very, very powerful because you can always come back and tailor all the things to your needs, but we're not going to cover this in this video. So wrapping this up, if you start using Jira um, as a project manager, you may want to start creating a project, um, your project actually, and then you start want to um, configure it um, in your Jira instance, you may need to use help of your administrators because you may not have the appropriate rights for that. Um, and then you start creating issues, which we'll look in the next video.